morning, church. If you're happy to be in God's presence, put your hands together for Jesus. Greet your neighbor, good morning and win today. Greet your neighbor, good morning and win today. Greet your next neighbor, good morning and win today. Win tomorrow and win forever. Greet the viewers all over the world, good morning and win today. Win tomorrow and win forever. Yes, you may be seated in God's presence. You are welcome to the arena of liberty in Jesus' name. We are the spirit of the Lord is. And as you all know, we are the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Today is your day of freedom in Jesus' name. Yes, viewers all over the world, wherever you are watching us from, distance is not a barrier. Just believe that is your only connection. As you join us in today's wonderful service, may your case fire be touched in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, you are welcome once again. If God be for you, who can be against you? Yes, this should be your confession as a child of God. As children of God, we are expected to live a lifestyle of positive faith. I mean positive thinking, positive talking, and positive acting. But sometimes in our lives, we encounter harsh realities of the vicissitude of life. When you find yourself in such a situation, what will be your response? As a child of God, there's a response that is expected of every one of us, which is how I feel has little or nothing to do with how I am. The part of me that hurts is only a shell. The real me is just fine. By saying this, you are making a positive confession over your situation. But that does not mean you are totally free from pain, hardship, trouble, or any other form of discomfort. And this will bring us to today's message titled, The Question. Tell anybody the question. I know many of us will be wondering the question. What is a question? Yes. Join me to find out what this question is as we take our proof text for today's message from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. I'll start my reading from verse 16. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. Verse 17. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. Verse 18. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. Verse 19. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to his servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Verse 21. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Verse 22. 
Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkey that I may run to the man of God and come back. Verse 23. So he said, Why are you going to him? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Verse 24. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. Verse 25. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, verse 26, which is our last verse. Please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? There's a question here. Is it well with you? Church, is it well with you? Yes. Ask your neighbor, is it well with you? Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor, is it well with you? Yes. And what is their response? Yes, you are saying it is well. Are you saying it is well because you are in church? Or because the evangelist is asking you? Let us continue our reading. Verse 26. Please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she said, it is well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. What a great woman of faith. What emulating. This is a woman that has just lost her holy son. And yet, when prophet Elisha asked how it was with her, her husband, and her son, she said, it is well. What an extraordinary confession of faith. Whereas on the outside, it is not well at all. But as a woman of faith, she saw beyond the present situation. Beyond the present situation was redemption, renewal, and revival. This woman shut the door on her problem and was believing God for a miracle. She did not let the grief of her situation to swallow her because she has not accepted it as being final. Faith gave her a different perspective on her problem than what other people would have had because of her faith. All was well. But the challenge many of us we are having today is that we see the confession of faith as this, as lies. We see it as denying reality. Some of them will say, how do you expect me to say I am healed when the sickness is still in my body, when I'm still feeling the pain? How do you expect me to say I am blessed when there's no food on the table, there's no money in my pocket? No, that is not it at all. Faith is not denier. Faith does not deny the existence of a problem. People of faith don't deny what exists. They are not limited to physical truth. They realize the potential available through God and speak forth their faith. 
they supersede natural truth with greater spiritual truth. Take note, one can only enjoy more of the reality of spiritual truth by confessing them. One can only enjoy more of the reality of spiritual truth by confessing them. So what are you saying? What has your confession been like? Man's faith is measured by his confession. Tell your neighbor, man's faith is measured by his confession. What you say will become a visible reality in the natural world as you steadfastly hold on to your confession of faith. Back to our title, our message title. How will you respond if you find yourself in the same situation as a Shunammite woman or lose something precious? If you are asked, is it well with you? How will you answer? Will you praise God and say it is well? Or will you speak forth all your pains? Your answer to that question is the reason you receive from God the way you do. What you do before meeting a man or a woman of God is sometimes the case after meeting the man or the woman of God. For example, the Shunammite woman. She traveled a long distance just to meet Prophet Elisha because she had the faith that if only she could meet with the man of God, all would be well. And all was well indeed. The woman with the issue of blood said, if only I can touch his garment, I know how will be well. And she was well indeed. The centurion said, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Just say the word, and my servant will be well. And it was well indeed. What you say or do or think before meeting Jesus is sometimes the case after. Here you are in the presence of God. What have you done? What was your thought? What did you say before coming here today? Because here you are, you are here to meet Jesus. You are not here to meet a man. You are here to meet Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Open up your eyes of faith and see what God Almighty has promised you in his word and speak them into reality. Speak them into reality. Then, regardless the situation you may be facing, Regardless what happens to you, if you are focused on what God Almighty says about you, about your life, you will not be worried. You will be at peace because your heart knows that the case is settled. Take note. No one conquers without faith. No one is healed, blessed, saved or rescued without faith. Faith sees the invisible, believes the impossible, and receives the incredible. So as a man or woman of faith, you can boldly and confidently say, it is well with me, even in the midst of trouble. Tell your neighbor, it is well with me. 
Tell your neighbor, it is well with me. Yes, it is well with you. Because no matter your situation, no matter what you are facing, your situation is redeemable through Christ Jesus. Trouble will come. Troubles and affliction serves in moving us closer to God. They serve as a tonic, a driving force to higher aspiration. But to the people of the world, trouble and afflictions and the likes are a poison that kills man's happiness and zeal to move forward. To we, the children of God, these troubles, rather than discourage and dampen our love for God, increases our love for Christ, whose love for us surpasses all understanding. Tell you about look beyond your situation. Look beyond your situation. Beyond your situation is redemption. Beyond your situation is reviver. Beyond your situation is renewer. So whatever challenges you are facing, whatever situation you find yourself in, speak positively about it, and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless his word in the midst of your heart. In Jesus' mighty name. Remain blessed. God loves you.